And we talk about aerodynamics and drag extensively in cycling and many other sports. But did you know that water is 800 times more dense than air, which means that reducing our drag while swimming is even more important. Now, if we want to move faster or more easily through the water, we want to work on and focus on a couple of main things. Increasing our propulsion, in other words, getting stronger so that we can pull and kick more with each stroke and reducing our drag. Now, we actually make a lot of videos that focus more so on the first of those, increasing our propulsion. But today, I want to focus on the second, decreasing our drag. Now, specifically, we're talking about hydrodynamic drag, our drag through the water. And there are a number of factors that influence this that would obviously go into a very fancy equation. We've got the shape of the body and its position, the density of water, which as I've said already, is around 800 times more than air, velocity, and the characteristic shape of the body. In other words, the surface area of the body that we're trying to push through the water. Now what's interesting is that drag actually increases exponentially with speed. So say you are swimming a two minute, 100 meter at the moment, and you want to improve that by five seconds, that is theoretically far easier than trying to improve by five seconds from a one minute 20, 100. So whilst improving or decreasing our drag is always important, its importance almost increases as we get faster. So let's take a look at that. All right, so first one, which I'm actually going to brush over fairly quickly, is things like our clothing, our skin, and our hair. Now, you might actually remember a number of years back, certain swimsuits were actually banned in the swimming world by FINA. Things like the laser suits. Now, the reason being is that they were so hydrophobic that they actually created less drag through the water than our own skin. So much so that some of those records actually still stand today. So whilst we're not actually necessarily going to be using suits like that, it just goes to show how much of a difference they can make. So even things like wearing a swim cap, if you've got a head of hair or even long hair, wearing a swim cap will make a big difference. Also wearing well-fitted, tight clothing for swimming and also even shaving your legs. Yeah, I'm afraid to say it does actually make a big difference. So whilst they might sound like marginal gains, they do make a difference. Right, now moving on then to the bigger topic our surface area and position in the water. Now, I've actually used the example a few times before, so don't excuse me, but I'm gonna use it again. Imagine yourself like a vessel moving through the water. The bigger and deeper you are into the water, the slower and the harder it's gonna to be to move through the water. A bit like a container ship trying to move through the water. Whereas the smaller and higher you are in the water, like a speedboat skimming along the surface of the water, the faster and more easily you'll be able to move through the water. Now, before you say it, and I know what you're thinking, you can't change the shape of yourself, or at least very easily. And yeah, you're right, but we can change how we move through the water. And I'm actually gonna use an example here, kind of using opposite ends of the spectrum. If you were to push yourself off the wall now and just glide, firstly, in a nice big stretched out starfish position, and then again, but in a nice streamlined, tucked up position, I hazard a guess you're gonna get a lot further in that nice streamlined position. So the more streamlined and the more that we can elevate ourselves in the water, the more easily we'll be able to pass through the water. Great, so how do we do that? Well, a simple one is working on your head position in the water. Now, a lot of people swim along looking ahead of themselves down the pool because they want to see where they're going. Now, the problem with this is your head position actually has a big knock-on effect to the rest of your body. Now, by lifting your head up, quite often what happens is that your hips and your feet can sink. Now, if you look at yourself as a head-on profile trying to push through the water, that is going to increase that surface area that you're trying to push through and therefore increase the amount of drag. So actually what you want to try and do is almost look down directly below yourself while swimming along or at the very least looking down at the pool, the floor below you and then looking forwards maybe one to two meters. By doing so you should feel the water sort of just running around the top of your head and as a result your hips and feet come up which should reduce the drag.
Now, if you've watched any of our videos before, you probably have heard us talking about the catch phase of the front crawl of freestyle stroke. This is basically the part where the hand first enters the water and catches and get purchased on the water. Now, how does this relate to our body position in the water? Well, actually, in many ways. See, the idea of the catch phase is literally to catch the water. We aim to get a purchase of the water straight away by almost pushing down upon the water when the hand first enters. The action we should aim for is as if we're putting our arm around a barrel in front of us. That way, we get the elbow up into a nice strong position to keep pushing and working with the water before transitioning into the pull phase underneath our body. Now obviously pushing down a fraction on the water as our hand first enters is going to actually give us a lift. I mean that we're higher in the water, but also by applying force throughout the whole of the stroke produces any dead spots in the stroke, meaning that we're going to be able to keep our momentum up and again, hopefully make us higher in the water. But trying to get a purchase and catch the water at this point in the stroke and almost instantly as our hand enters, it's quite a hard thing to do. As a result, many people end up slipping through that portion of the stroke or the elbow dropping down. It's quite a hard thing to master. So actually what I'd recommend is watching one of our dedicated catch videos here on GTM where we'll run through it in a lot of detail because let's face it, it does require a standalone video. And in that, we give you some drills and tips on how to improve it. Okay, our final one then, our leg kick. Now, interestingly, if you're kicking too much or too deep, it could actually be slowing you down, which I know sounds a bit counterintuitive because our leg kick is there to propel us. But as I've said, if you're kicking too deep or too much potentially, then that leg kick is increasing the surface area. So if you think about that head-on profile we discussed before, each time we kick, that leg extends out below our body, therefore increasing our drag through the water. Now, it's worth playing around with this. At certain speeds, you may find that because you want to go faster, you start kicking loads, but actually you may be kicking too much. Now, if you actually reduce your leg kick, you might find you're actually still able to swim at the same speed, but for less effort. As I said, worth playing around with, a bit of trial and error, particularly if you're someone, you know you kick a little bit too much perhaps, and you use your kick predominantly for propelling you through the water. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Really interesting topic. It's quite a fun one just to play around with. I think everyone can improve on their streamlining and just glide a bit more easily through the water. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like. We'll see you next time.